Hello, and welcome back to the Building with AppSheet series. I'm Google Developer Advocate Christian Schalk, and in this episode, we will introduce the AppSheet sharing and deployment features. Let's dive in. AppSheet sharing and deployment features work together and allow you to, one, share an app with both co-authors and early users, and two, share the app broadly via the deployment feature with multiple end users when development is complete. Here's a breakdown of the steps involved in sharing and deploying your app to users. The first step comes during early development of the app where you can share development responsibilities with other co-authors. Additionally, you can also share the app as is to early users or testers to get initial feedback. As the app is nearing completion, you can run the deployment check utility where it will generate a report on the overall state of the app. And finally, once the deployment check is complete and all errors and warnings have been addressed, you can then switch the deployment status to deployed where you can then share the app more broadly with all the designated end users. Let's now return to the tasks list demo app from prior episodes, and I'll walk through the steps on how to share and deploy this app. So first off, I'm going to click on the share app link on the upper left there, and you'll notice that it highlights the users tab on the lower left. And right away, we can actually see that we could add the entire domain set of users to this app. But for this example, I'm just gonna go ahead and add a single account. So I'm gonna enter in my Joe Developer test account on my demo domain. And now I can just check that checkbox to make this a co-author. And let's go ahead and send an invite email. And there's the message that I'm gonna send. So by clicking on this button, I'm gonna go ahead and invite the new user. And also right away, we can see that we have this new user that shows up. It has the ability to edit the application or I could make it so that they can view the application in the editor or simply just use the app. And likewise, I can also assign the role. So right now the default is just a basic user as opposed to making this user an admin uh, role. That way they could actually see more administrative types of features in the app. And the app version, you can specify which one you want, but I'm just gonna take the default, which happens to be the latest. All right, so now that I've sent this invite to my developer audience, or essentially this particular user, I can see that there's a new email waiting for this account. So incidentally, this is my Joe Developer account that I had set up beforehand. So I can open up the email. And if I was on a mobile browser, I, if I clicked on that, that would actually install a shortcut onto my mobile device. Now in this case, since I'm just using a desktop browser, if I click on that, that will just launch the application directly in the app itself. And so now I'm just using like the full screen view of the application, all right? so. Getting back to the email, if I also clicked on the edit tasks list, that just throws me into the editor with the application. And so that now I'm just editing the application as the other account in this sense, all right? So pretty basic stuff, really. So say I do some development and I want to communicate with my end users and the updates. So there's a nice utility here called the broadcast notifications. And all I have to do is click on that tab and just say something like, Something like that. The tasks app has been updated. And so you get the idea. I can fill out this information. I can also add a deep link, uh, which could be like maybe a link to this particular app or other things like an actual link to a view or something like that. And I'll click save. And then right now, as I click on send notification, this will instantaneously send out a mobile notification to all the users of this particular application. So they'll get that notification and they can take action on it from there, all right? So also, if I wanted to just send these links directly, I could just grab the install link or the browser link and send it via email or, or chat or it doesn't really matter. So now that we've updated our app some, we can then take the next step to deploy it. So I can click on this not deployed link and right as I click it, it will kick off a deployment check. And there we can see the results of the deployment check. Most of it's green. Some warnings are quite trivial, just like you know, setting up a industry or a function, just a descriptions type stuff or a launch icon. So pretty basic stuff here. Another one for content caching for performance improvements and so forth. But let's say I'm, these are all harmless. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the move app to deployed state. And there we go. The app is now in a deployed state. And I could very easily just return it back to the prototype state if I wanted to. So at this point, I could also go back to my users tab here and maybe broadcast further notifications if I wanted to. But that's basically it. I've, I've managed the application 
I've deployed it. Um, and I could also even run a few more services. So for example, if I wanted to convert my app into a custom white label mobile app uh, for iTunes or Google Play, I could do that. And there's actually steps for both Android and iOS uh, in order to do that. Likewise, there is a testing service. It's not available yet as of this recording, but you can sign up to be an early adopter. And then finally, there are the monitor features. So I can grab uh, usage statistics that I can just go through and browse through whenever I want to. I could uh, also check the audit history. So I could launch the uh, log analyzer feature and walk through the uh, report here. I won't go into full detail on these tools, but you, hopefully you get an idea how they work. And finally, there's a performance analyzer that I could launch as well, and that will give me a report on the overall performance of the of the application based off of all the different events inside of it. Now, there is a little bit of additional filtering analytics that you could use, but you also would need a corporate plan to do that. So hopefully this kind of walks you through the, the basic steps for sharing and deploying an app in AppSheet. This concludes the intro to sharing and deployments episode. For more info on AppSheet, Google Cloud, and Google Workspace, check out the links in the description below. And for more videos like this, make sure you subscribe to this series so you don't miss out. As always, thanks for watching.